In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we remember Frank Eaton at this Mass, and today we celebrate this Mass for St. Catherine of Alexandria, uh, the virgin and martyr from the very beginning of the fourth uh, century. So some of those, uh, many of the martyrs that we celebrate from the early church came from this very tumultuous period. Um, of course, the readings that we have, so I don't know if they trouble anyone, but we're, the readings focus on end times. So these are maybe times for us to think about uh, the different sufferings that people endured. Some of the saints that we celebrate from this period of time are among those who uh, suffered greatly, but their faith really uh, rose to the occasion. So they're uh, among some of those who suffered greatly, but great also was their faith. And so we take heart from their heroic example. So let us begin by calling to mind our own sins and asking for the Lord's mercy and his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who gave St. Catherine of Alexandria to your people as a virgin and an invincible martyr, grant that through her intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of your Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw in heaven another sign, great and awe-inspiring, seven angels with the seven last plagues, for through them God's fury is accomplished. Then I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. On the sea of glass were standing those who had won the victory over the beast and its image and the number that signified its name. They were holding God's harps, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, or glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship before you. For your righteousness, act, your righteous acts have been revealed. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our response: Great and wonderful are all your works, Lord, mighty God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. Let the sea and what fills it resound, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands and the mountains shout with them for joy. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He will rule the world with justice and the peoples with equity.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the crowd, They will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. So I mentioned at the beginning that there is um, a kind of a difficulty in, in dealing with these different passages that approach the end of times or that approach the times of turbulation or the time of the coming of the Son of Man, and it can lead to some uh, discontent. It can lead people to some anxiety, and, uh, and that's certainly understandable. But some of the things, though, that I think we should take heart in, though, is fundamentally a reminder that we all need to trust in God's divine providence. And that divine providence says that God will then help all things work unto good for those of the household of faith, as St. Paul would express it. But it, it, so it comes down to a radical sense of trust in the Lord, that the Lord will, in fact, take care of us. Um, some of the reasons for that trust, I think, we can, I'll just draw from some of the readings we have today. So even in the midst of all of the things that we hear from the book of Revelation, and it sounds horrible and terrible and all these things, but here we have this uh, scene that is set, this image here of all of those who are holding harps and singing the song of Moses and praising God. There's no sadness or anxiety here amongst, uh, amongst this group that is gathered around the Lamb. They so trust in the Lamb, and they follow the Lamb, such that they have every confidence, and they praise God. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord, mighty God. Even though uh, this passage begins with the awe-inspiring vision of the seven angels carrying the seven last plagues of God's fury, and yet they are still praising God. What is the Song of Moses? When it says that they're singing the Song of Moses, we can remember from the book of Exodus the hymn that Moses sang after they passed through the Red Sea. A tumultuous time, certainly. The Egyptians were pursuing the Hebrews. But the Lord separated the waters and let the Hebrews pass over on dry ground so that when they emerged unscathed and safe on the other side of the Red Sea, the, they saw the fury of the Lord then burying the Egyptians beneath the waters. So there was a moment of great turmoil, but the Lord protected them through that moment. And, and so that's with divine providence. We need to also have trust um, that we can sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deed. And great and wonderful are his works, the Lord, the mighty God, as we heard from the song. So is that to mean that we will not encounter any suffering or any difficulty at all? Well, unfortunately, that's not true. Um, the saints, like St. Catherine of Alexandria, show us that, in fact, some people, according to God's will, do encounter crosses and even serious ones, those especially that face martyrdom. Um, we're even reminded in the Gospel today that there will be some of you who will even be put to death, who will be handed over by brothers, relatives, and friends. Well, that doesn't sound so good. Except that the passage goes on to say just a verse or two after that, he says, But do not fear, because not a hair on your head will be destroyed. Well, how does that make sense? How can you not have a hair on one's head destroyed, and yet a person's life can be taken from them? But remember, though, what really matters. Those who are called to martyrdom, and it is a very uh, high calling indeed, um, so where the Lord provides that great courage uh, for those called to such, um, to such a great act of witness. Nonetheless, there is no, no power that can take away the faith and the promise of eternal life, which the martyr wins by the shedding of blood. In fact, there's no more secure uh, path to, um, to immediate union with Christ than to follow in his death. 
Um, and so when we see passages like this, we're really reminded that God's divine providence can lead us even through crosses, whether they be big or whether they be small. But still, it's that trust in divine providence that keeps us secure. So we listen to the words of the Lord. I think one of the things in the book of Revelation, I, if, I, if I start talking too much about this, I'll just go on and on and on. So I'm going to just make one observation and just leave it at this. Is that the more you go on with the book of Revelation and the more that the various things um, start to become more and more serious, we start to find out that while early on the different sufferings can be afflicted on all, Eventually, the punishments, the further you get into the book of Revelation, are all oriented toward those who are the opponents of God and the opponents of the Lamb. Those who stand with the Lamb are actually kept safe. So the, the, the worst of the punishments that you find toward the latter part of the book of Revelation are only for those who are disobedient to the Lord. Um, and so that also, in divine providence, should give us a sense of confidence. So... The, we may live in tumultuous times. We may be hearing readings about tumultuous times. Be not afraid. Trust in divine providence. The Lord has us in the palm of his hands, and we praise the Lord God and his mighty works, for he accomplishes true, true justice uh, on the earth and in heaven. Let us stand to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and for the holy people of God, uh, that we might have the courage to follow the Lamb no matter what the cost. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and for all throughout this country that we might be truly thankful for all the gifts that the Lord has given to us in abundance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a generous heart so that way we might share the gifts that we have received with those who are truly in need. We pray to the Lord. We pray for courage, especially on the part of young people, to follow the Lord uh, in a difficult world, especially for those who are called to give special witness to the gospel in their lives. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, for those who are ill, for the end of the spread of disease, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the faithful departed, for Deacon Frank Eaton. We pray for all of those whose names are recalled in the Book of the Dead. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for the protection and the safeguarding of our religious liberties and the freedom of the Church. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, May the offerings we bring in celebration of St. Catherine of Alexandria win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis, his assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, 
through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on St. Catherine of Alexandria a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder, tomorrow, of course, Thanksgiving Day, there will be one Mass at 9 a.m. And the day after that, um, just to allow Father Stark and I uh, some opportunity with our families, there will again be one Mass at 8 a.m., so no 7 a.m. Mass the next two days. Uh, then we're back to our regular schedule. So, um, But if that works for your schedule, hope to see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. for Thanksgiving Mass. Um, and as we uh, prepare ourselves for this season of Advent. So, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ending. Thanks be to God.